But they put more emphasis on Dobby dying than on Dumbledore. And I was like, it's Dumbledore! That is so sad. Uh, which house would you be in? Isn't it obvious? Gryffindor! <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to today's video. So I said this when I did the Disney tag, but it's true. I've been wanting to inject some more fun into my channel. It feels like ages since I did any like challenges or tags. So when I went on a search, I found the Disney tag and I found the Harry Potter tag. And so now I want to do that because you all know I'm a massive Harry Potter fan and like I've just recently come back I say just recently it's been like so long now oh, in September I went to Harry Potter World on a Disney holiday and it was amazing and I actually wore this top my Gryffindor top um but yeah I had the greatest time it was amazing and I really want to watch the movies again and also um, my best friend has booked for us to go to the studios again and I'm going to vlog it for you guys so look out for that coming soon. So yes, let's do the Harry Potter tag. Question number one is your favourite book. This is hard because I haven't actually reread them as an adult like and I know I need to and I'm actually planning to read them when I get into my new house and I've got my new big garden and I can sit out there under an umbrella with like you know music playing and just chilling and I can read the books that's what I'm like planning on spending my summer doing is to reread them but yeah it's been so long that it's hard but I would definitely say my first one has to be the first book which is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone because I feel like that's just your introduction to the magic like even you know before the films existed the book was what brought you into that world and I'd never read anything like it before actually it's funny because I really strongly remember the first time I ever cracked open that book and it was in school in a class where the teacher read some and then we took it all in turns to read from the book and I was in year I must have been just about to leave primary school, I think. But yeah, um, we got to read it. And I remember the first few pages, the way that it was written didn't make sense to me. And I was like, I don't get this. What's going on? And then all of a sudden stuff started happening in the book. And I just got drawn in. I just got completely sucked in. I was obsessed with them. I came home and was like, we have to buy the books. You have to read them to us, to our parents. Like, we have to read them. Um, and then when the movies came out obviously it was just so exciting but yeah I think it has to be the first one because that's when you really get introduced to the like magic world and all the stuff about like the chocolate frog on the train and it just made my imagination blow up as a kid and I've always remembered that so yeah I think that's my fave. Number two is your favourite movie. This is hard as well, the movies are all incredible um, and I love the first one for that same reason that it was my introduction to the to the whole world that I really remember seeing it as a kid. My best friend's auntie took us to and we went and she bought us all the sweets like the chocolate frog, the jelly beans and it was just amazing being immersed in that. Um, and I love the last one because it was just emotional. I'd grown up at the exact same rate as all the actors in it and like, I don't know, it just was like my whole childhood. And... Yeah, so it's really difficult, but I think my favourite has to be Deathly Hallows Part 1, and that is because that scene with the Deathly Hallows, when uh, Hermione's reading the, or telling the tale, and it's like her voiceover, and it's like a drawing, and you see death, and like, that scene is one of my all-time favourite movie scenes from any movie. When I first saw that in the cinema, I couldn't wait to watch that bit again, like, it just, like, it, again, it just made my imagination go crazy watching that all about the Deathly Hallows and the free men and I just was like in love with the way they did it. I thought it was stunning and so I think it has to be that one. Deathly Hallows part one. My least favourite book or movie has to be Prisoner of Azkaban and that is because I'm really scared of werewolves. <laughs> I hate werewolves in any film, like I really don't like them. Apart from in Twilight, they don't really scare me because to me they just look like big dogs. They don't really look like... I don't know, the way that Harry Potter did the werewolves I found like terrifying and one of, is one of them not a werewolf? What's the name of the other one? 
if you know what I'm talking about, leave it in the comments to remind me. But the way they're all like skinny and hunched over and like, oh, I just didn't like it. I still don't like it. So there's a lot in that film that I just didn't really, didn't appeal to me as much as the others. But that's because I don't really like, not, not that it's a scary film, but you know what I mean? I don't really like scary films. So that freaked me out and therefore I didn't like it. I just want to say as well, I did like it, I love all of them, but it's my least favourite. Parts of the books or movies that made you cry, the whole Snape and Lily montage, I can't, like, <laughs> that is so sad, like, when I, when I, like, first saw it, and, like, I remember it just being like, oh my god, like, he was in love with her, and, oh, it's just heartbreaking. And the way that Harry Potter's dad treated him and I just, it's just so sad. <laughs> they did it really beautifully, I think, in the, in the movie. Um, and yeah, I just, that is so sad. Also, when Dumbledore died, I was so upset. And I didn't feel like they put enough emphasis on it in the movie when he died. Like, I was sad as well when Dobby died, that's also one of the saddest moments, but they put more emphasis on Dobby dying than on Dumbledore, and I was like, it's Dumbledore! That is so sad! And like, I was just heartbroken, I remember watching the film and being like, what's Harry gonna do now? He needs Dumbledore. <sighs> sad. Also, obviously, leading on from that, when Snape actually dies, I think that's one of the most horrific moments in any of the films, the way that he dies. Every time I watch it, I'm like, why did you need to kill him like that? Why? Why? Because it's just brutal and he's just laying there. It's just really sad and they're the other side of the door and like, oh, I just... That makes me cry. And also, when Buckbeak gets beheaded, I know obviously he doesn't, does he? And they, and they, they like go... That's when they're like time travelling and they let him... They let him go, don't they? Lead him into the... Yeah, they let him go. But when I thought that he'd died... And the way Hagrid was so upset, and you all know Hagrid's one of my faves, like, I was devastated. There's a lot of moments that make me cry. <laughs> also, the end of the, like, the end of all the films, like, the end of the last film, that made me cry, because it was, like, the end of an era. <laughs> if you could hook up with any Harry Potter character, who would it be? When I was little, 100% it would have been Malfoy. I really fancied Malfoy when I went to see the first film, and probably the second one. Like, I just... I'm, I liked a bad boy, I guess, I don't know, I just liked him, I thought he was cool, and I fancied him, and all my friends fancied Harry, and I was like, nah, <laughs> it's all about Malfoy, um, but now, I don't know, that's really hard, none of them really do it for me, I love Ron, because he makes me laugh, and that's really attractive, um, Cedric, I guess, Harry for the power, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not that into any of them really, that way. Fave character. Obviously Hagrid is like my love because he literally looks like my dad. <laughs> so I love Hagrid, but I think it has to be Snape. Like he was the ultimate bad guy, good guy. The way he plays his character is just amazing. Like oh, I, just, I just love Snape, but also I love McGonagall. She's a bad bitch. I really love McGonagall, so probably those three. What would my Patronus be? A unicorn, duh. It'd have to be a unicorn. I actually did the test and it said it was a stoat? Stoat. I think that's what it is. I'll insert it here if I'm wrong. But it's like a little otter thing and it's really cute, but kind of vicious. And I was like, me. <laughs> but I would choose a unicorn. <laughs> If you could have the Resurrection Stone, the Invisibility Cloak, or the Elder Wand, what would you choose? This is really hard, and I had this discussion with my boyfriend and my family, at the, like, we had a barbecue recently, we were all talking about this, and everyone else chose the Elder Wand for the power, but I feel like I'd just be powerful anyway if I was in the Wizard of Wild, like, I feel like I'd be like Harry, like, I'd be like so powerful, I wouldn't need that. So I think I would really want the Invisibility Cloak. The Resurrection Stone appeals to me, but you're not actually getting the people back. It's just kind of like a vision of them, isn't it? And it's like, I don't know, that seems almost like sadder to like have them there, but they're not really there. So I think it'd be the Invisibility Cloak because like I could just go anywhere and do anything. I'd be like, 
robbing banks and <laughs> you could sneak into Harry Potter films and watch them and like, I don't know, I just, yeah, I think I'd like the invisibility cloak. Which house would you be in? Isn't it obvious? Gryffindor! <laughs> I'm a Gryffindor through and through. My boyfriend always takes the piss that I'm slivering because he thinks I've got this like evil side. Actually, that's really funny because when we, when we were in Harry Potter world, I was wearing this top and this choker and was my hair like this? I think my hair might have even been like this. Um, and we went on the Harry Potter ride and then when we came out into the gift shop, there's like obviously like actors slash like workers there, like cast members I guess. Um, and one of them went Gryffindor with that necklace, you're a Slytherin. And I was like, that's just, it just made me laugh. And ever since I've been like, maybe I'm a bit Slytherin. See, I'm like Harry. No, I'm a Gryffindor. I'm a Gryffindor. If you could meet any member of the cast, who would it be? It would be Alan Rickman, like, I just think he's an incredible actor, full stop, but like, him as Snape just is my childhood, and he will forever be Snape to me, like, if they ever redid them, or, please don't redo them, but if they ever redid them, like, he, no one could play it like he did, I, I don't think, so it'd probably be him, but if not him, it'd probably be... If it has to be someone that's like still living, it'd probably be like Michael Gambon or or Helena Bonham Carter because she's just a cool lady. Have you ever played any of the Harry Potter video games? I don't know if this counts, but I have the Lego Harry Potter game, which by the way is amazing. <laughs> I love it. Me and my boyfriend actually got the Marvel Lego game ages ago and we were obsessed with that. And then when the Harry Potter one, we saw the Harry Potter one, we were like, oh my god we need that. I think I got him it for Christmas, yeah I did, and all through the Christmas period, all through winter basically, we just hibernated and played that game, so I don't know if that counts, but I really love that game. Which position would you play in Quidditch? I think I would be a seeker. This sounds like I'm just like making myself a female version of Harry Potter, but I'm like, I'm, I'm a bit of a glory hunter. <laughs> In sports, I'm, I mean, in life, I'm so competitive. I like have to win and I'm really bad at losing and I love the glory of the win. So I feel like I'd probably be a seeker because you get to fly around well fast and then you get the glory of like, I just smashed it and won the game for us all. So I feel like I'd be a seeker. Yeah. Were you happy with the ending? Um, I was. I did have a moment where I was like, why would you throw away the Elder Wand? But then the more and more I've watched it, the more it makes sense to me. And really that's not the very end, is it? You get to see them all with their families and they've got kids and his kids named after Dumbledore and Snape and all those things. Like, yeah, I was, I was really happy with that. And I was happy to see that they're all still in contact and that they're, you know, getting on with their lives and they all seem happy. And so, yeah, I think and it'd all come full circle, so it would tied up nicely. I don't really like films that just end on a like cliffhanger. I like, because I, I need closure in life. I need it to be like tied up nicely so I can walk away and be like, yes, that makes sense to me. And I feel like seeing them with their kids and they're sending them off, you know, to um, Hogwarts, that made sense to me and I liked it. How much does Harry Potter mean to you? Um, a lot, like honestly, and I know that if you're not into the films, like you just won't probably get it, but they're more than just films and books. To me, it is my whole childhood, like I remember reading the books, then I remember finding out they were doing the films and getting really excited, then I remember obviously going to watch my f the first one, I remember going to, going to watch them all to be fair, I think other than the first one, I think I saw all of the other ones with my boyfriend in the cinema. Um, and yeah, now they remind me of like Christmas time because they're always on the telly, the snowy ones are like snuggling up and it reminds me of Harry Potter world and going to Florida. So like it's really tied in through my whole like life since I was like 10. So yeah, it's like my whole childhood and I just, it means a lot to me. So there you go, I have done the Harry Potter tag. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I do lots of fashion stuff, beauty stuff, challenges, tags, Disney stuff, Harry Potter stuff. I'm a bit of everything, but that's just who I am as a person. <laughs> my goal was to hit 500 subscribers this year and I'm nearly at 400 in May. So I think we're gonna do it.
me. Exciting. Yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful week and I will see you again soon. Bye.